In update 1.20.2, Mojang introduced a controversial villager rebalance. They nerf librarians, they nerf armors, and then they buff cartographers to be more than just useless glass eaters. But here's the twist. According to this commenter, Mojang only made these changes after they saw my manning video. Yes, a multi-million dollar game company listened to a 50k subscriber nobody's video about why they shouldn't nerf manning. And then they nerf manning anyways. And also it's my fault somehow. <laughs> so if these changes turn out to be really bad, I'll apparently have to bear full responsibility. Let's make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, so make a new world. What should we name it? Capitalism. And then enable villager trade rebalance. Sorry, I completely forgot bundles existed. But that's a video for another time. So first things first, we need to find a jungle for wood, bamboo, and sugarcane. Huh. I guess we found it. Next, we need to find a village. Wow, really? Why didn't I have this luck in my hardcore system? So the game plan is simple. Grow a bamboo farm to trade sticks with Fletchers. Trade with a clerical redstone and make an iron farm. Then with those emeralds and iron, trade the villagers that are actually relevant to this update. Alright. So what has changed for librarians? Well, first of all, trident and crossbow enchantments are just gone. But trident and crossbow enjoyers shouldn't worry about it too much. Because clearly, the curse enchantments were more important. And also, different types of villagers now sell different types of enchantments. For example, the plains villager would sell Punch, Smite, and Bane of Archibots. And sell protection to you once you've traded with him all the way up to master level. I don't, I don't mean to sound like a boomer, but back in my day, we'd have mending by now and be moving on to bigger projects. But with this rebalancing, I guess our next goal is to instead level up a librarian up to master level. And that means having to stock up heavily on sticks and iron for emerald trades, so... Alright, that's the sticks done, and iron's also done. Which brings me to this update's other controversial change. Get used to me saying the word controversial, I'm gonna be saying that a lot. Curing a zombie villager now only gives you a discount once. Which honestly, this one is well deserved, let's be real here. And besides, there's a second way to get discounts. Yeah, sometimes you have to... Oh man, these discounts are pathetic! Sometimes you have to convince them to give you discounts through my violent means. Ah, Are you seeing the patterns with these trades yet? Don't see it? Well, let me enlighten you. Mojang is trying to take power away from the early trades, and then adding better trades at later levels. They are locking the best enchantments behind Master Librarians and adding this immaculate iron block trait for Master Armorers. They want to reward you for mastering a villager. And they're also trying to reward you for exploring the world and finding other types of villagers. Emphasis on trying. Man, Mojang is just like me for real. I try so hard to succeed, but I keep failing. It's like they always say, you can't spell Zelerance without a few L's. Thankfully, I started to get a few W's. I managed to get this cartographer to sell me a Savannah village map upon hitting apprentice levels. I then got a second cartographer to see if they would provide me maps to other villages. And they did! Providing me a new map towards a taiga village. So then tried to get a third cartographer to see if they would give me even more maps, but this one just gave me the same taiga and savannah maps. They then suffered a tragic death from hyperaxemia. Hyper meaning high, X meaning X, and emia meaning presence in blood. High X presence in blood. What a tragedy. A life cut so short by natural causes. Hit the like button to pay your respects. One like equals one respect paid for the hyperaxemia victim. Rest in pieces. Now that we're in a much better spot in terms of financials for Minecraft, it's time for the most controversial part of these changes. The good news is that we have the emeralds to buy the enchantment books we need. The bad news is all the enchantments we need are locked behind certain biomes. So I guess it's time to create a villager breeder in the jungle. This was where my enthusiasm for the update started to dwindle. You see, having two villagers in a different biome doesn't guarantee a baby villager of that biome. Because for some inexplicable reason, 
Java Edition applies a 50-50 chance for babies to inherit the biome typing of their parents. So that means a 50% chance of getting a jungle villager baby or another plains villager baby. This child will later die from hyperxemia. Hyper meaning high. It's genuinely frustrating to see these two villagers in a jungle create plains villager after plains villager. Oh my god! There's a lot of things that I'm mixed about with this update, but having more RNG into the trading process is something I am completely against. I was so unhappy with these changes, I sacrificed a parrot out of frustration. If Mojang is watching this, I want them to keep in mind. I will drive the parrots to the brink of extinction if you do not remove this 50-50 chance. Your choice Mojang, let me know how much you hate parrots. Finally, desert village map. Right, fine by me. Pack your bags my friends, we're going to the desert next. Any librarians? Librarians? Why does this village have so many fishermen? How the f*** do you fish in a desert when there's no water? Oh, finally! Thorns. Hyper meaning. I know we're on the topic of villager trading and everything, but can we take a minute to talk about how beautiful the desert village design is? Like, look at the librarian's one. This is really cool. Okay, except the cartographer. What the hell is this design? This barely even counts as a house! I would renovate the house, but I'm too broke right now. Which is why I am once again asking for your help. You can help support the channel by donating through Super Thanks. Huge thanks to Elliot Zio and Duran Kill for this week's Super Thanks. Okay, what map are we gonna have next? The Plains. Well, I guess we're going home. After all of this, I was starting to see what they were trying to go with here. Mojang knows that players still want enchantments like mending, protection, etc. So they're trying to nerf villager trading in a way that encourages you to explore. They want you to explore the world to find these other villagers to get enchantments you want. Basically, they want you to make a Minecraft European Union. But without the good stuff from the, the European Union. Let me explain. Later in my playtesting, I explored the Taiga village. <gasps> Foxes! Don't come back, let me love you! As well as the Savannah village later on. The final map that I received was a jungle temple map, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get the cartographers to sell me a swamp hunt map. Thankfully, the Savannah village was right next to a mangrove swamp, and so, mending was finally received 11 hours into the playtest. Something that I could have gotten 1 hour into the game in the current version. But that wasn't even the most frustrating part of this entire playtest. Allow me to show you the completed map I've made towards the end. You might notice that the jungle temple is all the way over here, completely isolated from the other villages. Whereas the swamp hut is nowhere to be found. Wait a minute. Something that I want you to realize is that 11 hours to get mending is with very lucky RNG. I was considered lucky in this instance. What I think happens is that cartographers skip past every swamp that doesn't have a witch's hut and skip every jungle that doesn't have a temple. I was lucky enough to find the savannah village right next to a swamp. So after playing these changes for 12 hours, I guess it's time for a closing statement. Huh. I think we can make it more dramatic. <gasps> closing statement. So I understand that these changes earned final and Mojang could make adjustments. But I don't mean it in a good way when I say Mojang is trying to solve this problem in the most Mojang way possible. What do I mean by that? Well, they have this really bad habit of putting band-aid changes rather than solving the actual problems themselves. Let's start with the librarians. Mojang needs a reminder as to why librarians are so highly prioritized to begin with. Even in the video where I talk about mending, I've mentioned that the problem isn't how easy mending is to get through trading. It's the fact that the durability system and especially the anvil repair system are both so terrible that it forces people to trade with librarians just to avoid these two mechanics. And so far, none of these changes fix this root issue. You can't just nerf librarians without addressing the main reason they rose to popularity to begin with. Until people can reliably repair their tools without seeing the words too expensive, mending will always be in demand. So. Whole Mojang has done is make librarians 10 times more annoying to deal with without making them less important. The annoying lectern cycling is still there, but now you also have to trade with them up to master tier. And on top of that, you now also have to deal with the RNG of villager breeding. I do see the reason why Mojang wants to nerf librarians. I really do. But in this case, 
perhaps it's better to buff things than to nerf things. We could instead buff exploration and bring more players to explore. Which brings me to the good stuff. I like the changes to cartographers. They are the only ones I could confidently say are on the right track. It was fun to fill in the maps and see what was in the uncharted spaces. For like an hour. I got bored after that. But even with that aside, there are still a lot of things that hold it back. As you might guess, jungles and swamps are the biggest sticking point. I'm hoping that temples and huts are just temporary placeholders. Otherwise, I take everything nice I've said back. Mojang better add some way of transporting villagers across biomes. Whether that be through camels, llamas, horses, etc. Otherwise, players just have to hope that there's a village near a jungle or a village near a swamp. Or better yet, they can always just add jungle and swamp villages. Here, I'll even make some for them. Do, 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 do. Jungles can have a treehouse kind of design. Staircases, fencing, windows, ladders, maybe even pet parrots. Jungles have so much potential in this update, and they deserve better representation than a temple in the middle of nowhere. And swamps can have the good old boring mangrove style houses. I don't know, I spent all my creativity on the jungle villages, sorry. And if we're gonna be adding these two villages, could we also have a cherry village? Please? 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 So Mojang, if you're watching this, first of all, hello! The cartographer has the right idea, but could use some work. The arborer is whatever, but as for the librarians, there are plenty of ways to encourage exploration. And this is not one of the ways we can do it. If you make trading with librarians for mending impossible, then you will make AFK fish farms inevitable. Please rethink what you're about to do. If you've enjoyed me explaining my thoughts about these experimental changes, then you'll also enjoy the third episode of my hardcore series where I explain how redstone works. Trust me, redstone isn't as hard as you think it is. Give it a watch. I'll see you there.